Welcome to the Canadian edition of The Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Celebrating 55 years of ministry. I started watching Andrew. Everything that he said had a witness within my spirit and he made the word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the word of God and he deepened that for me. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on eternal life. I've got this little booklet that I'm giving away as a free gift to you. You can call or write and get it. And I've said this every day, but this is so important. This is like the most important thing that you could ever get. You might think, well, no, I need healing or I need prosperity. And those things may be an immediate need. But really, if you were to come, if you were to understand what the Bible says about eternal life, which is more than just living forever. It's talking about a quality of relationship with God, a personal, intimate relationship with God. And I've been using John 3, 16 and many other scriptures this week to make this point. But if you could ever really plug into the personal relationship with God that He wants to have with you, I promise you everything else, everything else, let me say everything else would come out of that personal relationship with God. And sad to say, I deal with so many people. This is not the common experience of the average Christian. Most Christians got saved so that they wouldn't go to hell. And even though that's awesome and that's important, salvation is much more than just an insurance policy. It's having a personal relationship with an alive person, Jesus. He comes and lives on the inside of you. And you become so one with Him that honestly, you don't have your own individual identity. You let Jesus live through you. You know, today is March the 23rd, 2023. And this is exactly 55 years to the day after the Lord changed my life. I had an encounter with the Lord on March the 23rd, 1968. That was a Saturday night back then. And I was in a prayer meeting with people. Now, I had been born again when I was eight years old. And you know, this testimony that I'm giving about what happened in my life fits perfectly with this teaching that I'm giving. Because when I was eight years old, I repented and I got born again. I had done something that week that for the first time in my life, I'm not saying it's the first time I'd ever sinned, but the first time in my life, I knew that I had just not disobeyed my parents, but that I had directly done something that was against God. That I, I, I've came to a realization, I could spend an hour teaching on this, but this is what Romans chapter seven says, that I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. I was born with a sin nature, but that sin nature isn't imputed unto you until you cross a threshold where you know that you have sinned against God, not just done something that was against your parents or against some restriction that somebody had put on you, but you know you'd sinned against God. I had done that that week at eight years old. And on Sunday, the pastor of the church got up and preached a message that he entitled, Our Tour of Hell. <laughs> and and it was real dramatic the way he did it. I've talked to him about that since then. He used to watch me on television. He's now gone on to be with the Lord, but he gave me a copy of that sermon that he preached. He had, and he gave me the Bible that he was using when he preached that. And I heard him preach this sermon on hell. And the thing that surprised me was there was not only bad people there, he was listing people that were good people. He was talking about some of the upstanding members of society being in hell. And I didn't respond during that Sunday morning service, but when I got home, man, I asked my dad, I said, what is he saying? Do I was under the impression that if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. And he was saying there was good people in hell. And my dad explained to me that only forgiven people go to heaven and people that don't accept forgiveness go to hell. And they could be good people, but if they didn't accept the forgiveness that only comes through Jesus, they go to hell. They could be bad people, but if they do accept the forgiveness that comes through Jesus, then they go to heaven. And when I understood that right there in my bedroom on a Sunday afternoon, my dad prayed with me and I got born again. And my motivation for being born again was because I didn't want to go to hell. 
BUT I GOT SAVED. AND DID YOU KNOW THE VERY NEXT DAY IN SCHOOL, I WAS IN THE THIRD GRADE. I REMEMBER MY BUDDIES WERE, I FORGOT HOW IT HAPPENED, BUT THEY COULD TELL I WAS DIFFERENT. AND THEY SAID, WHAT HAPPENED TO YOU? AND I TOLD THEM, I SAID, I GOT SAVED. DID YOU KNOW IN 24 HOURS AFTER I GOT SAVED, THEY COULD TELL I WAS DIFFERENT. I WAS CHANGED. I BELIEVE IF I'D HAVE DIED, I'D HAVE GONE TO HEAVEN BECAUSE I WAS BORN AGAIN AND I KNEW GOD. BUT BECAUSE WHAT I'M CALLING ETERNAL LIFE, WHAT THE BIBLE CALLS ETERNAL LIFE WASN'T PREACHED. IT WASN'T PREACHED THAT I COULD HAVE a REAL RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. IT WAS PREACHED, GET SAVED SO YOU WON'T GO TO HELL. THAT BECAME MY FOCUS. AND THEN THE REST OF THE CHRISTIAN LIFE WAS JUST TRYING TO GET SOMEBODY ELSE SAVED. AND SO I BECAME A RELIGIOUS PHARISEE, AND I GOT TO TRUSTING IN MY OWN GOODNESS, AND I DID NOT HAVE AN INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. I WAS BORN AGAIN AT EIGHT YEARS OLD, BUT IT WAS 18 WHEN MY LIFE REALLY CHANGED. MY DAD DIED WHEN I WAS 12 YEARS OLD. IT WAS IN MAY. MY BIRTHDAY IS APRIL THE 30TH, AND IT WAS MAY, I FORGET, that MAY THE 15TH OR 16TH IS WHEN MY DAD DIED. SO I WAS JUST A COUPLE OF WEEKS PAST BEING 12 YEARS OLD, WHEN MY DAD DIED, AND I REMEMBER AT HIS FUNERAL, WE HAD AN OPEN CASKET, AND I WAS SITTING ON THE FRONT ROW, AND I WAS ONLY ABOUT FIVE OR SIX FEET AWAY FROM HIS BODY, AND I WAS LOOKING AT HIM, TRYING TO PROCESS ALL OF THIS AND WHAT WAS HAPPENING, AND HIS FAVORITE SONG WAS, HOW GREAT THOU ART. AND SO THE, the PASTOR OF THE CHURCH, HE WAS SINGING, HOW GREAT THOU ART. AND I HAD PRAYED FOR MY DAD. I EVEN FASTED FOR MY DAD. HE HAD BEEN IN THE HOSPITAL FOR SIX WEEKS OR SOMETHING BEFORE HE DIED. AND BECAUSE I WAS A KID, THEY WOULDN'T EVEN LET ME GO SEE HIM. SO I DIDN'T EVEN SEE HIM FOR THE LAST SIX WEEKS OF HIS LIFE BECAUSE THEY WERE AFRAID I'D BRING IN SOME GERM OR SOMETHING. AND SO I'D FASTED, I'D PRAYED, BELIEVING FOR HIM TO BE HEALED, AND HE DIED. AND YET HERE THEY WERE SINGING HOW GREAT GOD WAS. AND IT LOOKED TO ME LIKE YOU KNOW, FAITH WASN'T WORKING AND ALL OF THESE THINGS WEREN'T WORKING. AND I WAS BORN AGAIN, BUT MAN, I DIDN'T KNOW GOD. AND I REMEMBER LOOKING AT HIS BODY IN THAT CASKET AND JUST AS THEY WERE SINGING, HOW GREAT THOU ART, I PRAYED AND I SAID, GOD, IF YOU'RE REALLY GREAT, REVEAL YOURSELF TO ME. WHO ARE YOU? WHAT DO YOU WANT ME TO DO? TWELVE-YEAR-OLD KID, I REMEMBER PRAYING THAT. MAN, YOU TALK ABOUT GOD BEING A GOOD GOD, TO HEAR THE PRAYER OF A 12-YEAR-OLD KID THAT I DIDN'T EVEN HAVE A CLUE WHAT I WAS ASKING. BUT I BELIEVE GOD ANSWERED THAT PRAYER ON MARCH THE 23rd, 1968. SO THAT WOULD HAVE BEEN uh, SIX YEARS LATER. AND I WAS IN A PRAYER MEETING ANYWAY. I WON'T GO INTO THE WHOLE THING, BUT I MEAN GOD SHOWED UP IN ALL OF HIS GLORY, IN ALL OF HIS POWER. THERE WAS ABOUT SEVEN OR EIGHT OF US IN THIS PRAYER MEETING IN A BAPTIST PASTOR STUDY AT 10 O'CLOCK ON SATURDAY NIGHT. WE MET TOGETHER EVERY SATURDAY NIGHT AND PRAYED, BUT THIS TIME GOD SHOWED UP, AND EVERY ONE OF US WERE LAYING FLAT OF OUR FACE FOR ABOUT TWO HOURS. AND I DON'T HAVE THE WORDS TO TOTALLY DESCRIBE THAT, BUT MAN, ANYWAY, WHEN THE LORD SHOWED UP, I HUMBLED MYSELF AND REPENTED OF MY um, SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS and the way I was trusting in myself. And I mean, the love of God came over me in a tangible way. I read that Charles Finney said he had a similar experience, and he said it was like waves of liquid love that just flowed over him, wave after wave. And that's the way I was for four and a half months. I was caught up in the presence of God, and I began to experience eternal life. I had been born again for 10 years, but 10 years after I was born again, IS WHEN I BEGIN TO EXPERIENCE ETERNAL LIFE. THAT'S WHAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT ARE BORN AGAIN, BUT YOU DON'T HAVE THAT INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP. AND I TELL YOU, ONCE THAT HAPPENED TO ME, I DIDN'T, I DIDN'T KNOW ANY MORE ON MARCH THE 24TH THAN I DID ON MARCH THE 23RD AS FAR AS SCRIPTURE AND UNDERSTANDING THINGS, BUT I JUST KNEW THE LORD ON A LEVEL THAT I DIDN'T KNOW BEFORE. AND GOD HAS TAUGHT ME EVERYTHING THAT I'VE KNOWN. I NEVER WENT TO CEMETERY, I MEAN SEMINARY. I NEVER WAS TAUGHT ABOUT GOD FROM SOMEBODY ELSE. I HAD THIS PERSONAL EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD, AND GOD TAUGHT ME ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND I'M TELLING YOU THAT THERE IS A RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD THAT YOU CAN HAVE, AND THIS IS THE MOST IMPORTANT THING YOU CAN GET BECAUSE EVERYTHING ELSE THAT YOU WILL EVER NEED TO KNOW ABOUT PROSPERITY, HEALING, WISDOM, 
direction for your life, anything else, it'll all come out of personal relationship with God. And so it's important to understand about healing. It's important. All these other things are important, but the most important thing is to have that relationship to where you know God personally. And let me just say that, you know, um, I'm not going to teach on this. I'll just mention it. But what happened to me that night was I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I was born again 10 years before that. And our Baptist church didn't believe in a second encounter with the Lord where you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. They didn't believe in that. And so I hadn't been taught about it. I didn't know what happened to me. But you know, in, he in hindsight, as I began to grow in the Lord, the Lord showed me I got filled with the Holy Spirit that night. Matter of fact, I didn't know what to call it. The very next day, that was a Saturday night, and on Sunday morning, I got up in front of my church, which was a big deal because I was an introvert. AND I COULDN'T EVEN TALK TO A PERSON uh, LOOKING THEM FACE TO FACE. BUT MAN, I WAS SO FULL. I GOT UP IN FRONT OF MY CHURCH AND I TOLD THEM, I SAID, I WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. I DIDN'T KNOW WHAT ELSE TO CALL IT. I SAID, I AM FULL OF GOD. DID YOU KNOW IF I WOULD HAVE SAID THAT I HAD COMMITTED ADULTERY, THEY MIGHT HAVE HAD MERCY ON ME BECAUSE YOU COULD REPENT AND BE FORGIVEN OF THAT. BUT WHEN I SAID I WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT, THE PASTOR OF THE CHURCH, EVERYBODY IN THAT CHURCH TURNED ON ME. WHO DO YOU THINK YOU ARE? PAUL WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. PETER WAS FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. THE HEROES OF THE FAITH, BUT WE CAN'T BE FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. I WAS... THEY BLASTED ME. IT ACTUALLY GOT TO A PLACE OVER THE NEXT FEW MONTHS THAT THEY TOOK A VOTE WHETHER OR NOT TO KICK ME OUT OF MY BAPTIST CHURCH. MAN, JUST WHEN I FINALLY STARTED GETTING TO WHERE I WAS USABLE, THEY WANTED TO GET RID OF ME. I, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT HAPPENED TO ME? I GOT FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND IT WAS THREE AND A HALF YEARS LATER BEFORE I SPOKE IN TONGUES. I DIDN'T SPEAK IN TONGUES IMMEDIATELY, WHICH IS A NORMAL THING TO DO WHEN YOU RECEIVE THIS INFILLING OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. BUT uh, AGAIN, FAITH COMES BY HEARING, HEARING BY THE WORD OF GOD. AND I'D BEEN TAUGHT AGAINST THAT. I'D BEEN TAUGHT THAT THAT WAS OF THE DEVIL. AND I WASN'T GOING TO LET SOMETHING THAT it WAS OF THE DEVIL HAPPEN. AND WHEN YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES, IT'S NOT GOD TAKING CONTROL OF YOU AND SPEAKING WITHOUT YOUR CONSENT. IT'S NOT SOMETHING THAT, YOU KNOW, THIS IS CRUDE. MY WIFE DOESN'T LIKE ME USING THIS EXAMPLE, BUT IT COMMUNICATES. BUT IT'S NOT LIKE WHEN YOU THROW UP <laughs> THAT YOU JUST PUT YOUR HAND OVER YOUR MOUTH AND YOU CAN'T STOP IT, BUT IT'S GOING TO COME OUT ANYWAY. SPEAKING IN TONGUES ISN'T LIKE THAT. YOU HAVE TO VOLUNTARILY SPEAK IN TONGUES. ACTS CHAPTER 2 VERSE 4 SAYS, THEY WERE ALL FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND THEY SPAKE WITH TONGUES AS THE SPIRIT GAVE THEM THE UTTERANCE. THE SPIRIT INSPIRES IT, BUT THEY ARE THE ONES WHO SPOKE IN TONGUES. THE HOLY SPIRIT DOESN'T SPEAK IN TONGUES. HE INSPIRES YOU. YOU HAVE TO SPEAK IN TONGUES. BECAUSE I WAS A BAPTIST, I HAD BEEN TAUGHT THAT SPEAKING IN TONGUES WAS OF THE DEVIL. SO THAT NIGHT, MARCH THE 23rd, 1968, I DIDN'T SPEAK IN TONGUES, BUT I WAS FILLED. WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND AS I BEGIN TO GROW AND I HEARD OTHER PEOPLE START TALKING ABOUT IT IN A FAVORABLE WAY INSTEAD OF BEING DEMON POSSESSED, I WENT TO THE WORD, I STUDIED IT, AND IT WAS THREE AND A HALF YEARS LATER WHEN I FINALLY STARTED SPEAKING IN TONGUES. AND I TELL YOU, I WOULDN'T HAVE RECEIVED THE FULLNESS OF WHAT GOD WANTED TO DO IF I DIDN'T SPEAK IN TONGUES, BECAUSE THAT IS A PART OF THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, BEING FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT. BUT ANYWAY, ALL OF THOSE THINGS TO SAY THAT THAT'S WHAT HAPPENED TO ME THAT NIGHT. WHEN I FINALLY EMPTIED MYSELF OF ME AND REPENTED AND I WANTED GOD MORE THAN I WANTED ME, GOD FILLED ME WITH HIS HOLY SPIRIT. AND THAT BEGAN THIS RELATIONSHIP OF ETERNAL LIFE TO WHERE GOD BECAME MORE REAL TO ME THAN ANYTHING OR ANYONE ELSE. AND I'M SPEAKING TO PEOPLE TODAY. THERE ARE PEOPLE WHO THERE MAY BE SOME PEOPLE WHO DON'T EVEN KNOW GOD IN A PERSONAL WAY. ALL YOU DO IS JUST KNOW THAT GOD EXISTS. You have, YOU HAVE THAT KNOWLEDGE, BUT THE BIBLE SAYS EVEN THE DEVILS BELIEVE AND TREMBLE. THAT'S NOT ENOUGH. THERE'S SOME OF YOU THAT JUST KNOW ABOUT GOD, BUT YOU'VE NEVER HAD A PERSONAL ENCOUNTER WITH GOD. YOU NEED TO BE BORN AGAIN. BUT THEN THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT HAVE BEEN BORN AGAIN, AND IF YOU WERE TO DIE, YOU WOULD GO TO HEAVEN. BUT YOU DON'T HAVE AN INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. AND I'M TELLING YOU, YOU CANNOT GET THERE WITHOUT RECEIVING THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, WHICH INCLUDES SPEAKING IN TONGUES AND MANY OTHER THINGS. BUT YOU NEED THIS POWER OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. JESUS SAID IN THE 14TH CHAPTER OF JOHN, THE NIGHT BEFORE HE WAS CRUCIFIED, 
HE SAID, I'M GOING AWAY, BUT I'M NOT GOING TO LEAVE YOU COMFORTLESS. I'M GOING TO SEND THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND HE WILL TEACH YOU ALL THINGS. HE WILL LEAD YOU INTO ALL TRUTH, AND HE WILL BRING ALL THINGS TO YOUR REMEMBRANCE, WHATSOEVER I HAVE SPOKEN UNTO YOU, JOHN 14, 26. THERE'S SO MANY OTHER PASSAGES IN THAT THREE CHAPTERS RIGHT BEFORE HIS CRUCIFIXION. THIS WAS THE NIGHT BEFORE HIS CRUCIFIXION. THOSE THREE CHAPTERS WERE WRITTEN, HIM SPEAKING TO HIS DISCIPLES, AND HE CALLED THE HOLY SPIRIT THE COMFORTER. HE SAID, THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL, will REVEAL ME UNTO YOU. THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL SHOW YOU THINGS TO COME, JOHN 16, 13. THE HOLY SPIRIT, IT'S ACTUALLY, HE SAID IT WAS ACTUALLY BETTER FOR YOU TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT WITH YOU THAN TO HAVE ME IN MY PHYSICAL BODY WITH YOU. THAT'S OUT OF JOHN CHAPTER 16, ABOUT VERSE 7. THAT'S AN AMAZING STATEMENT. MOST PEOPLE WOULD THINK, OH, MAN, I'D LOVE TO HAVE JESUS IN HIS PHYSICAL BODY HERE TO HELP ME AND TO SPEAK TO ME AND SHOW ME THINGS. HE SAYS IT'S ACTUALLY, IT'S MORE EXPEDIENT FOR YOU IS WHAT IT SAYS, TO YOUR ADVANTAGE TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND MY PERSONAL TESTIMONY IS I GOT BORN AGAIN WHEN I WAS EIGHT YEARS OLD. BUT 55 YEARS AGO TODAY, THE HOLY SPIRIT CAME UPON ME AND CAME WITHIN ME, AND THE HOLY SPIRIT STARTED REVEALING JESUS TO ME, AND THE HOLY SPIRIT BUILT A FIRE ON THE INSIDE OF ME THAT HAS NEVER GONE OUT. IT HAS GROWN. I'M MORE ON FIRE. I'M MORE PASSIONATE ABOUT THE LORD TODAY THAN I HAVE EVER BEEN IN MY LIFE, AND IT'S 55 YEARS LATER. AND I'M TELLING YOU THAT YOU NEED THIS BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND ONE OF THE REASONS IT'S SO IMPORTANT IS BECAUSE HE IS SENT TO REVEAL JESUS UNTO YOU. HE WILL DRAW YOU UNTO THE FATHER. JESUS SAID THIS IN JOHN CHAPTER 6, VERSE 44. HE SAYS, NO MAN CAN COME UNTO ME EXCEPT THE FATHER DRAW HIM, AND HE DRAWS US THROUGH THE HOLY SPIRIT. YOU CAN'T JUST COME TO GOD ON YOUR OWN. YOU CAN'T KNOW GOD ON YOUR OWN. YOU HAVE TO HAVE THE INFLUENCE OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. THE GOOD NEWS IS THE HOLY SPIRIT WANTS TO INFLUENCE YOU MORE THAN YOU WANT TO BE INFLUENCED, BUT HE DOESN'T COME UPON YOU AUTOMATICALLY. THE HOLY SPIRIT ISN'T GOING TO FORCE HIMSELF UPON YOU. YOU HAVE TO INVITE HIM IN. YOU HAVE TO SEEK IT. AND AS I'VE BEEN SAYING ALL OF THIS WEEK, THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN MESSAGE IS NOT ABOUT KNOWING GOD IN AN INTIMATE WAY RIGHT NOW. IT'S ALL ABOUT THE FUTURE, GETTING YOUR SINS FORGIVEN SO YOU'LL GO TO HEAVEN. AND THEY DON'T PREACH ABOUT AN INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP AND a, a RELATIONSHIP WHERE THE HOLY SPIRIT IS DOMINATING AND CONTROLLING YOU AND REVEALING THINGS TO YOU AND SPEAKING THINGS TO YOU. THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN DOESN'T EVEN KNOW THAT THIS IS FOR THIS LIFE. THEY THINK IT'S ALL WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN IS WHEN SALVATION REALLY TAKES PLACE. WELL, IT'S GOING TO BE BROUGHT TO COMPLETION AT THAT TIME, BUT I GUARANTEE YOU RIGHT NOW THE HOLY SPIRIT WANTS TO MOVE IN YOUR LIFE. JUST TAKE THAT ONE THING THAT IT SAYS IN JOHN 16, 13, WHERE IT SAYS THAT THE COMFORTER WILL LEAD YOU INTO ALL TRUTH. HE WILL SHOW YOU THINGS TO COME. THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL SHOW YOU THINGS TO COME. JUST THINK OF WHAT YOUR LIFE WOULD BE LIKE IF YOU KNEW WHAT WAS GOING TO HAPPEN IN THE FUTURE. THERE ARE SO MANY TIMES THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS WARNED ME, DON'T DO THIS. DON'T LET THAT PERSON HAVE THIS uh, AUTHORITY IN YOUR LIFE. HE'S SHOWN ME THINGS. ONE TIME THE LORD TOLD ME NOT TO GET ON A PLANE. AND DID YOU KNOW, I, I CANCELLED A MEETING, AND I REFUSED TO GO TO THAT MEETING, AND THERE WAS NO REASON FOR IT. I ACTUALLY GOT THE PEOPLE MAD AT ME BECAUSE THEY HAD ALREADY ADVERTISED IT, AND I SAID, I DON'T KNOW, BUT GOD TOLD ME NOT TO GO. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT THE PLANE CRASHED AND KILLED ALL THE PEOPLE ON THE PLANE? THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL SHOW YOU THINGS LIKE THAT. MAN, IT'S NOW BEEN 55 YEARS SINCE I STARTED HAVING THIS RELATIONSHIP, THIS INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. AND THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS BECOME MY BEST FRIEND, AND HE SHOWS ME THINGS, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, I AM BLESSED, 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 BLESSED. THERE IS NO JUSTIFICATION, THERE IS NO EXPLANATION FOR MY LIFE OUTSIDE OF GOD. AND IT'S NOT BECAUSE HE JUST PICKED ME AND DID SOMETHING. HE WANTS TO DO SOMETHING AWESOME IN EVERY SINGLE PERSON WATCHING THIS, BUT YOU HAVE TO PURSUE IT. AND AGAIN, MOST PEOPLE HAVEN'T EVEN KNOWN THAT THIS INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP THIS QUALITY RELATIONSHIP, ABUNDANT LIFE IS EVEN AVAILABLE FOR THEM. THEY GOT SAVED SO THEY WOULDN'T GO TO HELL. AS GOOD AS THAT IS, THERE'S SO MUCH MORE. GOD WANTS TO KNOW YOU PERSONALLY. AND YOU SAY, SO HOW DO I GET THERE? WELL, lear LEARNING THAT THIS IS WHAT GOD WANTS IS THE FIRST STEP, AND THEN YOU HAVE TO PURSUE IT. AND LIKE I WAS SHARING, YOU HAVE TO OPEN YOURSELF UP TO THIS BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. 
Man, I'm not going to teach on that today, but I do have other materials on it. If there's anybody who has never experienced this second work of grace, I don't know how to express it, but salvation is absolutely necessary. That's the first step. Before you can receive the Holy Spirit, you have to receive Jesus because the Bible says that Jesus is the one who fills us with the Holy Spirit. So you have to receive the giver before you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But if you haven't had a second encounter, it doesn't have to be separated by 10 years the way it was with me. It, it could be separated by 10 minutes. But there is a separation between being saved and then being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The disciples saw Jesus resurrected from the dead. And in the 20th chapter of the book of John, they fell down and said, My Lord and my God. Thomas said that in John chapter 20. So that's what it takes to be saved. He was born again, but then Jesus told him in Acts chapter 1, don't go anywhere. Don't tell anybody the greatest news that has ever been in the history of the world about the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus said, don't tell anybody until you receive power from on high. And then in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power, dunamis, miraculous power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You need this second empowering of the Holy Spirit. And again, there's many things that happen. The supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit open up. You speak in tongues. There's all kinds of great things. But in my life, the greatest evidence, the greatest benefit, of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit was that, man, I fell in love with Jesus and I got to be in personal communication with Him. I could give you story after story about I was in Vietnam and people were dying all around me and I just had so much love and joy flowing through me because I knew the Lord and I knew if I died, I'd go to be with Him. And I actually was excited thinking I could see Jesus before the sun sets today. I know some of you think I'm weird, but I think you're weird to have this available to you and not be able to draw on it. God wants you. He wants relationship with you, not just when you die and go to heaven. He wants relationship with you right now. And I'm encouraging you to please take advantage of this. You know, you can call in. We've got a number on the screen, and we've got people at our phones. And each one of them have received this baptism of the Holy Spirit. They have this gift of speaking in tongues. They can explain it. And I've got other materials that will go along with this that they could explain these things to you. So I encourage you to call that number and please let someone pray with you. And also remember that I'm giving away this free little booklet on eternal life. It'll explain everything I've talked about today and go into more detail. It's just a brief summary, but it's powerful. Then we also have CDs, DVDs, and a USB that has the audio and the video on it. And I promise you, this would really make a difference. But I know that there's many of you who've tuned in today, and this program was just special for you. You know that there's something more. You're born again. You don't doubt that, but you know that there's just got to be more than what you're experiencing. I encourage you to please call the number. Please request these materials, but also let the people pray with you, explain to you how you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I promise you, you won't regret it. It'll change your life. So listen to our announcer. He's going to give you all this information, and then please call or write today. I want to thank our partners for allowing us to be able to broadcast on this network and reach out to you. You know, we have around 63,000 partners and it cost us over six and a half million dollars a month just to do what we do. It's expensive to get the word out, but I'm sure many of you would say it's worth it. It's touching you, it's changing your life. And we are not only financing these broadcasts that you're watching, but we have a Bible college with offices in 20 different nations. We've got Bible schools scattered around the world with over 9,000 students. And we are in a building program that we are building this out so that we can accommodate 2,500 students minimum here in Woodland Park. This is where all of the things originate. And in order to do that, we need more partners. It was partners that brought you this program. It's partners that have enabled us to do this. We've acquired over $130 million worth of buildings and land in just nine years. And it was partners that do that. The students do not pay 
for all of these things. So I'm coming directly to you, and if you've been blessed, I would like to ask you to go to awmi.net slash campus, and you can see an artist rendering of all of the buildings we're gonna build. You can actually go inside and look around these buildings. I think you'll see that it's gonna be a first-class campus, and we are gonna minister to people. We're already graduated over 12,000. I believe that this is gonna be a big part of this end-time harvest, but we need partners to help us do it. So check it out at awmi.net slash campus. Pray about it and become a foundation builder with us, getting the gospel out, changing people's lives who in turn will go out and change the world. You know, on today's program, I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receiving salvation and speaking in tongues. And if you haven't received either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would like to encourage you to please call our helpline. We have that number right there on the screen and we have people waiting to pray with you. I encourage you to call and receive either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Andrew is offering his booklet, Eternal Life, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Eternal Life, is available as a CD, DVD, and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website at awmc.ca. Click on Today's TV Offer under the Store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you, and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Karis Bible College, Toronto. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. Remember, that's awmc.ca. Thank you for your support and we look forward to hearing from you today.